Hello my friends and welcome back to the rabbit hole. Today's video is inspired by the announcement I'm from made of their new Paraline. Yes, I'm from Skincare, a skincare brand that I have absolutely enjoyed, ranked as one of my top skincare brands out there, has announced these new products. And to a, a bit of mixed feedback, Listen, here's the deal, you're in the rabbit hole. You know that today's video is not just going to be, ah, pretty, let's go out and buy it. Oh no, oh no, no, no. We are gonna do so much more with this collection because this is the perfect opportunity for me to share something with you that I think about often, but sometimes it's a little hard to convey. Ne'er have I seen such an opportunity. In fact, you are going to be asking questions in this video that you did not know you had, but don't worry. We're gonna answer them too. So let me go ahead and start by giving you some backstory. So in case you're not familiar with the I'm From skincare brand, they are a Korean skincare brand that bases their products off of a certain theme. So for example, they've had the I'm From Mugwort collection, I'm From Fig, I'm From Honey, etc. This new collection is a small collection. I'm not entirely sure if it's in collaboration with Sydney or not, but anyway, it's a two product collection. And when I first saw this on Instagram, you can probably guess how the comments went on Instagram. They went very true to Instagram fashion. A lot of people saying, wow, so exciting. Can't wait to try this. Can I please have it for free? What's the word for this? I think Elon Musk just used this. Oh, hustle. There's a lot of hustle on Instagram. It is what it is. Anyway, this kind of left me over here going, uh, do we not have any further questions about the pear collection? Like, I don't know, why pears? So I turned to Reddit and I was not disappointed. Uh, you know, the thing about Reddit versus Instagram, this is a whole nother video actually, but there's, there's certainly a difference in the way people carry themselves. The anonymity of Reddit seems to allow people to ask questions that they don't feel comfortable asking on Instagram. So on Reddit, on our Asian beauty in particular, people were asking these questions. Why pear? What does pear do for our skin? Why have I never heard about the benefits of pear before and yet these two products are appearing on the market? That's the kind of question that people should be asking more often with skincare releases and yet I don't automatically jump to the assumption of, oh, this is absolutely a gimmick just because we've never heard of it before because as these things go, there is a marketing side of things and there is a science side of things. So I thought what I would do in today's video is talk to you about that science side of things. Why it is that I'm From decided to release a pear collection, even though you may not have heard of the benefits of pear. And I truly feel like it's most helpful if we make this a huge conversation from the start, but then as we work towards the end of this video, we're gonna funnel this topic down into a tiny little topic that you will truly understand. I promise you, if you stay to the end of this video, you will understand are plants anti-aging? See, here's the thing. If you've been in the skincare community for a while, you might start to notice that certain concepts are repeated a lot. So much so that it might start to sound like it is getting into gimmick territory. Let me give you some examples. How many times have you heard, this product is rich in antioxidants? How many times have you heard, this ingredient gives you great antibacterial properties that may help you to fight your acne? And you may also have noticed that this topic comes up a lot when we are talking about plants. So what's the connection here? What is the connection with antioxidants, antibacterial properties, anti-aging, and plants? Travel back with me for a moment to grade school here. How do plants get energy? How do plants eat? They don't eat like humans or animals do, right? They use photosynthesis, which uses energy from... Ugh, do we say it? It's a bit of a swear word in the skincare circles. Oh my God, back, back. And of course, why is sunscreen the number one anti-aging skincare product? Well, because sunlight contains UV, which causes the production of reactive oxygen species in our skin, which can contribute to aging. But what about plants? They're also susceptible to the same free radical damage from the sun, but unlike animals or unlike humans, they can't go and seek shelter, they can't go inside, they can't go grab themselves some banana boat from the drugstore, they can't go off to Canada because they're tired of America's healthcare system. 
And yet plants do continue to thrive. They've been around longer than we have. So what do they do? They must have some kind of a natural defense system. And in fact, they do. This is where we're basically getting into an evolutionary defense system. Plants needed a way to survive and thrive in spite of free radical damage from the sun. So they started to produce their own antioxidant system. So again, we all know that sunscreen is anti-aging. We all know that antioxidants neutralize free radicals, which are found in sunlight. So can we jump to the statement, antioxidants are anti-aging? I'm going to say sort of on this one. In 1956, there was a theory proposed called the free radical theory of aging, which postulated that all aging is a result of free radical damage. We don't exactly rely on that today. It's still an interesting theory, but we don't 100% rely on it because we do think that aging has quite a few more characteristics to it. So basically what I'm saying is you can wear sunscreen every single day of your life from the day you're born and you should, but that doesn't mean that you are going to look like you did when you were six months old at 80, right? So we do know that there's other factors going on. And yet I do believe, and other people do believe as well, that antioxidant activity can contribute to reducing the signs of aging. And one more note here on straightening out the science versus a bit more of the theory. So something that I said earlier, all plants have antioxidant activity. Uh, that would be a theory, although a pretty good theory, as you can tell from the logical conclusions behind it, but it wouldn't be scientific to actually state that simply because we would need to run assays or analyze every plant in existence for its antioxidant activity before we make such a generalized sweeping statement. What about this idea of antibacterial activity? Well, it's actually quite similar to the antioxidant conversation. Again, because plants can't be running around getting all of the supplies that they need to protect themselves so that they can thrive in nature, they have to innately produce substances that will protect them. So again, we do tend to see antibacterial activity coming from plants, but also again, it is a scale. It is something that we would need to individually test each plant for, and it is very, very probable and what we have seen so far that some plants have much higher antibacterial activity than others. We really got to give it to plants. They attack free radicals, they protect themselves against bacteria, and most importantly, they're a great snack. Now here's a related question for you. I'm sure that everyone knows fruits are a good source of vitamins. But have you ever wondered why that is? Remember yet again that plants are stuck. They're stationary. They can't move, so they have to have somewhere within the plant, all of the supplies that they need to get through this life. And again, that's what they do throughout their entire system, through their roots, through their stems, through their seeds, through their fruits, are all kinds of different supplies, which is why scientists have to individually analyze the different parts of a plant. Think of it essentially as each plant in existence is its own tiny Walmart. It's a tiny Walmart, they got everything they need. Hold me closer, tiny Walmart. And to take this one step further, this is why there is so much attention paid towards plants in skincare, in healthcare, in so many different facets of our world because there are possibilities. And remember in the ginseng video when I talked about the very specific phytochemicals found within ginseng that have these added benefits in terms of anti-aging. Well, that may exist within plants, but yet again, we have to assay the entire plant. We have to really get in there and figure out all of the chemicals in plants. And there are hundreds, thousands, lots of chemicals within plants. So I think the most important take home that I'm trying to convey here is that there is a tremendous amount of possibility when we are talking about plants. Again, though, we're taking a scientific approach to this, which is why we can't get just too excited. We can't just go out there and grab any plant that you find and start rubbing it all over your face, nor should companies be going out there doing the same thing and throwing these plant ingredients into products. Again, there is a lot of analysis that has to go on in order to discover what actually makes a difference on our skin versus what 
is potentially dangerous. Obviously, most of you know, oh, I don't want poison ivy skincare, but there are other plant ingredients that could potentially be harmful for human skin. So again, we do this analysis because we need to discover the benefits and what is potentially a problem. Uh, let's finally talk about the I'm from Para line. So what is this? Is this a logical conclusion? Is this a case of potentially great anti-aging products from an uh, so far fairly undiscovered fruit ingredient? Or is this a jump? To conclusions, Matt. So as far as the ingredient that they have chosen, Pyrus pyrifolia, which is Japanese pear, this does appear to have quite a few interesting constituents within it. We have beta arbutin, which is not quite the same as alpha arbutin. We talked about that in the good molecules video, but nonetheless it is there, along with malic acid, citric acid, quercetin, and then hydroquinone. But in what levels? See, this is where we kind of lose some of the control over a skincare product when we start putting in these whole plant ingredients is that they uh, have various levels of these and it can vary from one batch to the next. This is why a lot of scientists and skincare enthusiasts argue that it is better to use the isolated form of those ingredients as opposed to the whole plant. But there is a counter argument to that and that is what about all of the undiscovered attributes within a plant. Now listen, I don't want to critique a brand that I truly love, but I will admit to you that I'm a little on the fence about the fact that I personally couldn't find any published literature on pears on human skin. But emphasis on the word published, you know, it is very possible that I'm From has done some research behind the scenes, opted not to publish it, but know something that we don't. You know, we talked about this a lot in the algae video. Sorry to be referencing so many other videos. We talk about a lot on this channel. Though, hey, you should subscribe. <music> But see, there is another really important point to this, and that is that even though the ingredients lists on these products do seem to be very high in this pear fruit extract, it's not just pear. We are not just buying bottles of pear here. We are certainly getting many other beneficial ingredients. We've got humectants in this. We've got hyaluronic acid. We've got panthenol. And in the serum, hydroxyethyl urea, allantoin, you know, a lot going on in addition to the pear ingredients, which ultimately, I feel like this leaves us as customers a bit in the dark. It leaves us not knowing whether the results people may see from these products are from just a good formula overall, a good non-irritating, in my opinion, formula, or is it some added benefit from the pear? The answer to that right now is, mm -hmm. And I have one final question to close this video out on, and that is, given that we don't know how much data there is in terms of the application of pears to human skin, are we the guinea pigs? Again, my ultimate suspicion is no, they probably know something that we don't, but again, because we don't actually have proof of that, it's a valid question. It is a valid question to ask. And that's what I have for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it though. I hope you really took something from this because again, I've just never seen this conversation and I don't know why it's such an important conversation. But I do have a question for you and that is, will you be buying the I'm from Paraline? I'm heavily considering it. I don't yet know if this is something that is only available in Korea, because it currently is. Uh, but if it comes to Yes Style, I don't know. I think I, I, I think I would try it. <laughs> but you all know I'm willing to be very experimental with this face. I'm not saying everybody has to be, just saying that I am. So that's it for today's video. If you found this video helpful, please do make sure to like and subscribe, as it does truly help this channel out. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week, and I will see you all next time.